So recently on the channel, I've been getting myself into a lot of trouble for still using tripods. I use this, an Olympus EM1 Mark II. There's some absolutely fantastic in-body stabilization. So let's use it and see what we can do. Here's a picture of the tree. So just off to my right hand side there is this old tree that's fallen down and I thought oh that'd make a fun subject for a photograph wouldn't it? So it's a beautiful mid-October morning today, the sun's not very high in the sky yet so we're still getting some nice warm light, it's not really direct white light, it's still quite warm and it's still quite soft so it's a great time of the day just to come out to the woodland so with this shot being backlit I kind of thought it's probably the best time of day to get this. So we've got the fallen tree just behind me and there's also this tree behind me as well. And I thought we can maybe get that in the frame as well just to anchor it on the right hand side. So we're gonna have the standing tree at the right, the fallen tree at the left. Let's take a photograph. So let's get the camera off the clip and see what we can do. It's been quite liberating so far, not having to carry on the tripod. Tripods are somewhat restrictive in a way. There are if you got your composition set up and you're staying there for a wee while but when you're just plodding around the woods it can be a little bit restrictive so yeah, it's making quite a nice change of pace to not have one so let's have a look we need to finesse where the sun is because we obviously i want to get this a little bit backlit but i don't want the sun as a big bright orb and highlight in the sky which inevitably is going to blow out anyway so let's have a look if i focus on the fallen tree and get most of that in there. So we're f2.8, 800th of a second, ISO 200. Here's that photograph. So to be perfectly honest with you, woodland photography of all of the outside sort of genres of photography is probably my least favorite. And I don't mean that as in its least favourite to look at the images. I think the Russians are here. Some sort of fighting, yet. Yeah. It's not my least favourite in terms of looking at the images. It's more myself. I just don't enjoy it all of that much. I tend to get frustrated. I find it very difficult to find and isolate subjects. And so I tend to shy away from it. But today we're out just facing that fear head on and hopefully we're gonna get some nice photographs doing that. Like I said, we're also using no tripod. We're using the Ibis in my camera today. And so far, the lack of having to use a tripod and being able to move around a little bit more, I think it's helping. It may be a mentality thing when I come to the woods. I find comfort in using a tripod. I always have done. It's something that I've always had as part of my workflow is a tripod and the camera in front of it and me stood behind it. And I'm wondering if being able to explore the woods a little bit more without having to worry about the restrictions of a tripod is going to enable me to find things that I would otherwise miss, be able to get a little bit deeper and further in. And hopefully the lack of using a tripod and relying on the Ibis on this camera is going to do wonders for the photography today. So let's go for a little bit of a stomp round, get a little bit further in than we normally would, and just see what's hiding in and amongst all of the trees today. So a few minutes ago when I was talking about getting frustrated with this, well, I can feel that that is what's happening. I've been walking around these woods now for 15, 20 minutes and kind of getting further and further in there, but I'm not seeing the photographs and frustration starts to build within myself and I start darting around and I'm probably missing things. So I just need to remind myself just to calm down a little bit, just slow down and a photograph will present itself eventually. 
Another problem that I'm facing is it's now getting a little bit later on in the morning and all of the nice soft light that we had half an hour ago is kind of getting replaced by some white, direct and very harsh light now. So we may have to start thinking about that when looking for photographs as well. But I just need to calm down, slow down and just see what photographs present themselves. Instead of rushing around and darting about trying to find them, maybe just walk around and stumble across them like I was a little bit earlier on. But a little bit earlier on we had the nice soft side and backlight. That's gone. And this is where the frustration starts to play out with woodland photography within myself. Let's just keep going, keep persisting and see what we find. So I've moved now into an area of the woods that is somewhat sheltered from the bright sunlight because there's still some canopy left on all of these trees. But it's given me an idea, you may be able to see where you're standing right now, how overexposed the top left hand corner is. I wonder if I can maybe stand where you are and use the overexposure and just create something using this fallen tree and the tree stump behind me. Let's have a look and see if we can't use slightly overexposing something just to create a dramatic look to a photograph. All right, so let's look at doing something here. So if I focus on the fallen log down there, I've got the histogram and the highlight and shadow clipping turned on at the moment. I can see it's overexposing, but it's not blowing out. There's only a very slight amount of the highlights being blown out over on this side, so we may be able to work with that. So 3,000 tones of a second, no, 2,000th of a second, 2,000 moving, a very fast shutter speed, f2.8, ISO 200. Let's see how it turns out. So I think I'm starting to work out where I've been going wrong with woodland photography all of this time. Twofold. The first one, the lack of tripod is really helping with what I'm achieving today. I'm not restricted to where I can put the tripod, therefore I'm not restricted to where I can be and I can move around and I can find things I would otherwise miss while the camera is on a tripod. And the second being light, which I know probably sounds obvious for photography, but just hear me out for a second. I often use the woodland as a backup plan when the weather has changed and it's a bit grey, it's a bit flat and it's a bit horrible. And you come for a walk around the woodland and I've always had it in my head that woodland needs the shade in order to stop all of the harsh little pockets of light. So I've always tended to visit the woods on days very much the opposite of what we've got today. Whereas the side light, the back light, playing with slightly overexposing some elements of it. I feel like that's working better than coming on days that I would traditionally come down to the woods, which is really helpful because it's kind of, it's given me an idea of what to look for now when I come to the woods. I mean, we mid October now, woodland is going to die off in the next month. It's going to flare up with color, don't get me wrong, but after that it's going to die off and then we probably won't be back while the springtime but at least the next time I visit, I've got something of an idea with what to look for. So thank you very much for watching today's video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up and a like because it does help the video and it brings new viewers to see my content. And if you liked it a little bit more than that beneath me in this old tree stump, there's a subscribe button. You can press that and you'll see more nonsense with micro four thirds cameras from myself every single week. So until the next time, I'm going to love you and leave you in safe peace and goodbye.